to discuss about the soil pollution before uh, going uh, into the topic we uh, try to understand what is the soil what is soil made of of, of. there is a difference between uh, two terms are used uh, exchangeably like uh, land and soil land is the total uh, surface of the earth uh, without the covering of water like the continents it might be the mountains it might be the forest it might be the barren land any uh, uh, dry uh, thing that is the land but soil is <clears throat> something that is a living entity that is having a definite uh, proportion of both organic and inorganic materials besides it is having uh, the and uh, uh, rich biodiversity of microorganisms like bacteria fungi and actinomycetes basically soil is a thin layer thin means uh, on an average it is a layer of 15 centimeters it's covering the earth and it is basically formed by the weathering of rocks over the period of time around 1000 or more than 1000 years when because of certain physical chemical and biological processes a rock is broken into the small pieces when any rock is broken because of for example uh, because of high temperatures freezing temperatures because of certain uh, plants when some plants grow into the rocks and they break it they crack it into the pieces and also because of uh, the, the action of the water uh, you can see the big boulders they are in the water streams particularly when we go for any excursion site like Pahalgam, Gulmarg you can see the big boulders in the water so that boulders have been uh, brought down from the mountain so the water stream and uh, uh, through the course of the water stream those boulders start uh, rolling with the water and they break down in the sand and or the period of time that sand is converted into the soil basically soil is a mixture of uh, it is it contains around five to six percent of organic materials organic materials basically that is originated from the dead organic material of plants and animals and microorganisms besides it contains 40 to 45 percent of the air like the pore space mm, and uh, and about 40 to uh, 45 to 50 percent it contains the inorganic minerals it is basically silica oxygen aluminium various kinds of minerals are present in the soil so it is uh, a kind of living entity in which plants grow in which plants uh, i mean uh, grow their roots for the absorption of uh, both uh, water and minerals so most of the minerals the plants they get from the soil so most of the uh, plants they get their nutrients from air also uh, so they are some kind of exceptions but most of the plants they get their nutrients or uh, water and nutrients from the uh, soil so these nutrients they travel from the uh, producers to consumers and top consumers you can say from the producers to herbivores and consumers so the soil is a kind of uh, necessity for the existence of the human life on the earth so it is not said it is an elixir elixir means that uh, without that we cannot live but still most of the plants we can see uh, the soil is very important there is a concept of uh, like uh, hydrophonics hydrophonics is basically when we uh, put some uh, proportional kind of uh, minerals or nutrients in the soil and we directly plant the some plants that grow on the surface of water like clod in the poly houses and then they uh, absorb directly nutrients from the water without the soil that is called hydrophonics but that technology is very costly and it is limited it can be only used when uh, at places where there is a scarcity of the land so these technologies are mostly uh, like the water technologies uh, they uh, are in very advanced stage in uh, uh, the country called israel so they are uh, very advanced in the water kind of uh, water technology kind of thing so this soil when it is damaged because of certain reasons that we will be discussing in the 
course of this lecture. So they may be uh, because of the water erosion, they may be the natural or anthropogenic both, like the water erosion, mean erosion. So this enriched mineral uh, content of the soil, it is flown from one area to another area or it is made unfit for the growth of the plants. That is, it makes a problem for the environment and food security. So this is called what uh, we call as soil pollution. So before going into the soil pollution, let me show you what it is a soil profile looking like when we dug a deep, one meter deep uh, uh, into the soil and then we see different kinds of horizons, different kinds of layers in the soil. Uh, mostly when we uh, talk about the soil, we are talking about the top 15 centimeters, but there is a lot of things that happens beyond the 15 centimeters. So the layer one, that is just uh, immediately uh, uh, in which basically the crops grow. That is this one, the dark brown color. This is called O zone, that is organic zone. So the most of the pollution that happens in this zone, this O and A zone. So this is uh, this uh, thin layer, it is called the O zone, where uh, the most of uh, the organic material is uh, decomposed and later on minerals and nutrients they get uh, converted into the simple forms and they are penetrated into this deeper layer in this o a surface so the most of the nutrients they are available in this a surface and uh, if the percolation because of uh, the water some nutrients they travel to this b surface but you can see in this surface there uh, are uh, the chances you can find small pebbles kind of thing. That is basically how a, a soil is formed from the rocks. You can see the bedrock because of the action. Uh, what was I saying? Because of chemical and biological and physical processes. This rocks get converted into the substratum. Then this... Uh, I mean the loose kind of sand kind of thing then this ca further gets uh, converted into the simple soil simple kind of nutrients and then it gets converted into the soil this pro process takes around 1000 years so you can uh, just imagine how valuable is this soil so here you can see uh, this is for example can, can see this is uh, A surface, this is all B surface, and under this is, is C substratum. So now what are the causes of the soil pollution? So uh, with the increase in uh, the, with the, with the increase in the development and advancement in the lifestyle of humans, they have done many kind of activities and industrialization is one of those activities besides the rapid increase in the population humans they start uh, capturing new kind of land surfaces and they convert those land surfaces as per their will like they construct buildings they construct roads and uh, on the way of constructing that kind of thing they degrade the quality of the soil so the soil is also used, uh, name of the uh, soil is different in different literatures you can find it. Sometimes it is called a dirt, some uh, time it is called a mud, sometimes it's called a ground. It makes me remember a, a movie that is Hollywood movie that's called Waterworld. In that movie, you can uh, see that there is no land surface available. All the earth is uh, covered with the water there is no land literally there is no land availability so a man that is uh, traveling far into the sea and he uh, goes deep into the sea under the sea and he collects the handful of the soil and he sells that soil and uh, with that thing uh, it can be uh, seen how valuable is the soil so the people are just checking the soil as they have found some kind of treasure so in that movie, they call soil as a dirt. They taste it and they, because they didn't know how the soil looks like. So when this soil 
the property of soil changes because this, like the property of water it has physical chemical and biological properties same the soil also have physical and chemical and biological properties because as a, as I, as i was saying the soil has different kind of structures uh, depending upon the location depending upon from which type of rock the soil is made of so there is a different uh, structure there is a different kind of soil structure and property texture is different texture is basically soil is made up of silt sand and clay if the proportion of these sand silt and clay it uh, changes its structure sometimes it's called clay sometimes it's called a loamy soil sometimes it's called a sandy soil you can find in the literature there are uh, many types of uh, the soil structure uh, soil textures soil structure is kind of there is also many kind of uh, uh, types of uh, the soil uh, structure and because of uh, soil pollution these physical properties change over the period of time similarly the chemical properties because uh, when a soil is generated when a soil is created from the weathering of the rocks the property of the rocks naturally goes into the soil depending upon what kind of minerals are available in the rocks those minerals will also be available into the soil so those minerals may be they enrich they might be enriched with the nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen the soil may be more fertile if the soil is having less nutrient nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus and other micronutrients that are very important for the plant growth then soil can be said it is very uh, uh, less fertile or it is infertile so that soil may be called all the barren soil or weak soil that 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 does not support that much of uh, plant growth so the soil pollution originates from the waste of dumping uh, like we uh, dump over the wastes that are from the kitchens or any kind of uh, thing from hotels or from commercial uh, sources we directly dump into the soil so this problem is more prevalent in other rural areas when there is no proper dumping site so the uh, solid waste that is originated from home or domestic waste or commercial waste that is directly dumped into the soil. So it may contain the plastic waste or any kind of chemicals. They directly go into the soil and that make the soil unfit for the growth of plants or any other process. Besides that, uh, there might be agrochemicals like use of fertilizers. I have discussed it, how a fertilizer and pesticides that it applied in the agriculture fields how it finds its way into the water bodies but before finds uh, finding its way into the water body it is present in the soil and that soil it kills the natural biodiversity of the soil so there are a number of the causes of the soil pollution which we will be discussing in detail so here a few in this diagram you can see the first one is a municipal waste Municipal waste is the waste garbage that is generated at her home, basically. Every day, there is uh, uh, around every household generates 1.4 to 2 kilograms of the waste, solid waste per day in rural, uh, in uh, urban areas. And in rural areas, this amount is a little bit less. So you can calculate how many households are there in cities and you can multiply and you can see how much waste is generated per day and how much effort it takes to dump those wastes. Dumping has also a different kind of uh, types. How can we dump? How can we use it for the energy generation? So we need not go into that uh, topic right now. So next cause is uh, the pollution. Soil pollution is the industrial waste. It may be the chemicals or any other wastewater that is generated from the uh, industries. Fertilizers, that is from the agriculture, pesticides, also agriculture, radioactive waste, basically, where the, any kind of uh, the laboratory is present that is using the radioactive elements or any nuclear power plant that is uh, used for the generation of the electricity or any site that is having any nuclear incident or accident in the uh, past, like Chernobyl uh, was in 1986, Fukushima was in 2012. There are a number of the incidents where radioactive wastes or radioactive leaks happened 
and that makes the soil unfit for the use. Besides that, there is a biological pathogens. It is basically the originated from it is basically originated from the human excreta or animal wastes or the manures which we apply on the agriculture fields. Besides that, the least uh, or but not uh, last uh, but not least, it is uh, mine dust. That is uh, the dust that is uh, that travels from one location to another location because of the mining. So that dust also contains very harmful elements. So the first one that uh, we are going to discuss is the municipal waste. So municipal waste is basically the waste garbage that is generated that includes rubbish, garbage or discarded materials like bottles, pet bottles, basically the water bottles or any soft drink bottles we are using. So we thrash it or juice bottles, we just throw it on the road or on the land, wherever we are passing through. So the clothes, leather, ash, any kind of domestic or market waste that is uh, includes the municipal waste. Besides, uh, it also includes the hospital waste that contains uh, organic materials like the blood uh, clots, like the bandages, uh, cottons that contain the blood uh, traces or any human uh, body parts, chemical uh, plastic syringes or vials, they are also uh, included in municipal waste. So all these wastes, they are dumped in certain areas and soil gets severely contaminated and polluted. So when these uh, wastes are dumped in any area, so there is a proper way, how should we dump these uh, wastes? So for hospital waste, there is a different kind of um, methodology and for the municipal waste, there is different kind of methodology because there is a chances if we are not dumping these uh, wastes properly, there is chances the leachates, if you remember the water pollution where I discussed one of the important ground water pollution is the leachates from the landfill sites, from the dumping sites. The leachates, they travel into the groundwater and that make groundwater contaminated. So this is uh, the important, if we uh, if we are not properly dumping these solid waste, then there are chances these leachates, they travel into the soil, uh, then they percolate into the groundwater and that makes the groundwater unfit. So that is one case. Another case is besides, it makes the soil unfit for any kind of activity. You cannot uh, basically live there. Uh, it is not fit for the domestic, like you cannot live there because it produces very false smell. So in our nearby area, there is a dumping site, whole of the old city city is if in fact uh, affected because of that smell. And uh, from my home, the site is around, around 10 kilometers away, but still I can feel, I, I can smell the uh, garbage smell from that uh, area. So you can see how all, uh, or how all city nagar city, old city is affected because of one dumping site, because it's not properly dumped. So that is one. Besides, we are talking about a soil, that area is unfit for any kind of the activity because all the land surface is co covered with the garbage or rubbish. So it is because of all uh, unhealthy, unsystematic waste management. So if we, uh, if we have time later on in this unit, uh, I will be discussing about the solid waste management or integrated solid waste management where different techniques are employed. How can we dump various kinds of wastes that are generated from our industries, uh, from domestic areas or industries? So if we talk about the global perspective, so global production of municipal solid waste is around 1.3 billion tons per year. That is the statistics of 2012. Mm -hmm. But it has been expected it will rise to 2.2 billion tons annually and it will be around 2.2 billion tons in 2025. So it is almost double increase in uh, from 2012 to 2025. So you can see how big problem is the municipal uh, waste disposal. Second one is uh, that is uh, related closely with the industrial waste that is the accidental oil and chemical sp uh, spills. 
So this is basically the oil leaks that happens uh, at the places where the storage uh, is uh, I mean the storage place of oils because of some problems uh, maybe it might be because of the war or any kind of technical failure that the oil leaks happen. Uh, it can happen also because of the transportation, uh, maybe uh, because of the problem in the railway lines or the tankers, they uh, fell because of the accident. So the oil and chemicals are spread over the place or the fuel station. So these chemicals or oils, when they spread over the place, they create, uh, they, I mean, uh, they put this soil unfit for any kind of use. You can see uh, one of the chemical spills were the Bhopal gas strategy that was uh, methyl isocyanate that was released from the industry, but uh, that uh, created mostly that created air pollution, but it also have the impacts on the soil uh, soil pollution because later on it travels to the further further areas and it has to deposit somewhere because of the rainfall. So that is an example of the chemical spills but here we are talking basically the liquid state of chemicals that are released or uh, that are accidentally or uh, intentionally released on the land surface to put the soil unfit for the use so the production of the chemicals have grown rapidly in recent decades and uh, it is projected to increase annually by two uh, three point four percent until 2020 uh, 2032 2030 so other economic developed countries they are uh, contributing much in future but uh, in 2015 european industries or chemical industry production goes up to 310 at uh, 390 million tons uh, but that is uh, i mean most of the chemicals they are the hazardous to the environment so I need not to tell much about this because you know that uh, most of the industries, they have a protocol, they have different kind of management. If any kind of the accidental spills happen, what are the mitigation measures? But if all the strategies, they fail, then these, these chemicals can find their way into the soils through various means. Either they go uh, into the atmosphere and because of the precipitation, they can... Uh, they can be settled down on the land surface or soil surface besides they can be released through the water and that water can also uh, um, uh, that also can lead to the soil pollution when the water reaches to any uh, soil surface so uh, oil spills also happens in oceans where the uh, this uh, oil travels to the shores shorelines and that uh, oil settles down in there so most of the management activities for the oil spills in oceans is done on the shorelines where uh, different kinds of chemicals or microorganisms are applied to degrade such kind of chemicals and oils. And uh, third one is acid rain. You know, uh, acid rain is caused because of the presence of sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide in the atmosphere where because of the burning of the coal, sulfur dioxide is released into the atmosphere and nitrous oxide is mainly released in the atmosphere by vehicles. So uh, when such kind of uh, nutrients, when such kind of uh, pollutants, they react with the water, I mean the rain water, they travel into the land and they can be deposited in the land and they can change the pH level of the soil. If you remember, I have said in acid rain, in soil, if the pH is decreased because of the acid rain, some of the heavy metals or chemicals, they get activated, they get released, and they get available in, in available form. So the plants can absorb them you know, from the roots. So they can, that chemicals can travel over the food chain. And besides, it also makes certain area barren because when the pH level decreases, so there is uh, the pH level is not in ambient range for the growth of plants. So this is also an important in the areas where there is uh, coal mining happening and there is uh, coal, uh, I mean, the coal burning is happening. So if you remember, I have discussed it in the states of Jharkhand and West Bengal, the sulfur dioxide pollution is very high. 
means that this area is having very high acid rain and uh, soil degradation from the acid rain is very high in such areas. So in picture, you can see how acid rain damaged these areas. You can, uh, you can uh, see here the uh, vegetation and here uh, you can see the difference because of the acid rain, all the land uh, gets converted into barren because of the acid rain. And uh, next one is the use of agricultural chemicals or fertilizers. You know, we, uh, because of uh, the growing population, particularly in India, in from 1965, there has been an increased use in fertilizers and pesticides because we have to increase our agriculture production to feed the increasing population. So uh, in uh, green revolution, we use high yielding varieties so that high yielding varieties need to be protected from the pests, from the rodents, from the weeds. So you, we use n number of chemicals, uh, weedicides, fungicides. So that fungicides, weedicides, and uh, other rodent decides they find their way into the soil and that over the period of time that make uh, the soil unfit for the growth. So uh, besides they attack the natural uh, organisms or the other beneficial organisms that are present in the soil. They also kill those kind of organisms. Besides uh, high yielding varieties, they uh, need a very high amount of fertilizers high amount of nutrients that is usually not available in the soil. So we use uh, high doses of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. So over the period of time, the uh, natural capacity of the soil to become fertile decreases because there, if you remember, I have said there is a biological process uh, how the microorganisms decompose the organic materials. So when we add these chemical fertilizers, the microorganisms ability is decreased uh, for uh, uh, making this, the nutrients available into the soil. So this poses very high risk for the soil. So we need uh, to reduce such kind of uh, pollutants uh, like pesticides or fertilizers. We should go for the bio fertilizers or bio pesticides. So in India, basically, uh, there is a high increase of uh, use of uh, pesticides. Like uh, uh, there are around, uh, in last 30 years, around 23 pesticides have been phased out or banned in India because of their harmful effects. So endosulfan, you might be uh, knowing uh, its impacts in the state of Kerala, how endosulfan impacted whole of the in fact, pop, infant population in the Kerala. So the pesticides are very high use in India and certain African countries. So uh, industrial like uh, wastes, some of the wastes that are generated from the industry might contain high amount of nickel, chromium, ammonium, cadmium, or any toxic uh, substances like cyanides, acids, alkalis. These also uh, pose high risk to the soil and also they can travel to the water through the runoff and they can uh, these nutrients can find their way into the uh, human body through the uh, food chain or tropic structure and uh, they can pose high risk you can uh, remember how uh, minamad about the minamad disease how methyl mercury enter, uh, entered in the uh, into the body of the humans and how can how it impacted the uh, human body and uh, it created the Minamata disease. The radioactive pollution, it is uh, basically the uh, pollutants that are the isotopes of various elements like uranium, iodine, chromium, cobalt that are generated because from the power plants or that are generated from the various industries and uh, that can pose various threats because uh, the nu uh, nuclear wastes, they contain uh, various kinds of radiations like alpha, beta and gamma radiation that can pose uh, chromosomic changes in the human bodies. So that persists for a longer period of time. If you remember the half-life, for example, one kg of carbon-14 takes around more than 3000 years to degrade to its half quantity to uh, half kg. So you can see these pollutants remain into the atmosphere for a longer period of time. 
So the nuclear power plants and nuclear laboratories, they are the main source of the nuclear uh, radioactive waste. So this is not common. This is not available for, at every place. So uh, another one is pathogens, biological pathogens. They are the main source of these are the human and, and animal wastes. So animal wastes are basically uh, which we the manure which we apply on the soil, uh, undegraded manure. So global manure production is increased up to 66 percent from 61 to 2016, and uh, it has uh, increased uh, from uh, this increases around from. 73 to 124 metric tons. These statistics are important because I am showing you these statistics are important when you are going for any examination, any entrance kind of examination. These statistics must be remembered for those kind of examinations because it is kind of a general knowledge also. So the volume of manures that grow into soil is uh, growed from 18 to 28 metric tons. So basically uh, whatever agriculture activities we do we use manures and digest manures so such kind of manures they also contain high can may contain it is not important they are containing they may contain heavy metals pathogens normally bacteria some harmful bacteria may be available so that also can pose uh, the soil pollution uh, in some cases there are antibiotics also so uh, antibiotics uh, for example if uh, there is any animal uh, that animal died because of certain diseases we use antibiotics because so that uh, it can be cured the disease can be cured because uh, of the disease when that animal dies we throw it on the land so the toxic uh, substances or the antibiotics which were present in that animal that finds its way into the soil so these are the various uh, uh, ways how uh, the soil pollution happens. Besides, there might be ignorance towards the soil management related systems because of the intense agriculture activities or uh, the creating the concrete jungle that might uh, lead to the pro uh, yeah, poor soil management. Or uh, we might be going for the un uh, I mean, for the irrigation activities that also can pose uh, the soil pollution, like we are using the sewage water, uh, wastewater for the agriculture purpose. So that also can create the soil pollution. So uh, also the septic tank system or the uh, improper management of such kind of system that can also pose the soil pollution or leakage from the sanitary uh, uh, sanitary sewage that uh, in nearby areas it can uh, post uh, the soil pollution. So these were. Some